can't make a short video to save my life. Hello Tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Today I'm going to attempt the impossible. I'm going to try to make this video nice and short. Um, I don't know why, but it seems like my video videos tend to run about 20 minutes or more. <laughs> and uh, it seems like no matter how hard I try, I can't shorten it um, any, any shorter than that. So I'm going to try to do that today. Um, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you may have seen that um, a while ago I was approached by one of my um, subscribers and was asking if I would babysit tarantulas for him. He's going on a trip and um, he didn't have anybody to babysit for him. And um, as payment, he bought me a Harpactera poker piece, and uh, which I have in my possession. And you know, it, it was something that was a little bit out of the ordinary, but strange things happen and uh, it's, it's finally happened. We've made the exchange and that's what I wanna share with you today. So as you can imagine, um, having someone care for your pet while you're away um, is not always all that easy and you know if you have a cat or a dog it, it might be a little bit easier to find someone who'd be willing to take care of it and as far as the care of the animal um, it, you know most people have experience with cats and dogs so they'll know exactly how to take care of it but tarantulas are kind of special right um, it's not a thing where everybody has experience with tarantulas and a lot of people have a fear of tarantulas so i completely understood after he you know approached me where he was coming from and why he wanted someone with experience to keep um to watch over his tarantulas while he was gone now um just a quick reminder he is going on a hike and that is uh the hike is across the Appalachian Trail and I hope I said that correctly because I got schooled by one of my um, viewers they left me a message on my on my uh, YouTube channel saying that I mispronounced it so um, I did a little research just to kind of find out and, and I guess you know figure things out for myself and that um, you know people that are not from the south will tend to pronounce it Appalachian which I think I did and um, he corrected me and said that it's pronounced Appalachian so um, uh, here's a little link to the video that I watched and uh, why they pronounce it Appalachian so I'm gonna say Appalachian but you know wh wherever you're from you might say Appalachian but people from that area will call it Appalachian so anyway, he's going to be gone for approximately six months. It might be shorter, it might be longer. So that's a long period of time to be away from your um, tarantulas. And of course, it's difficult to find somebody who would be willing to take care of that, of those. So, um, uh, you know, I, I went ahead and, and said, okay, that I would take care of him. And as payment, he bought me a tarantula, and that one of the ones that I wanted, which was a Harpactera poker piece. So I'm in love with that spider. It's beautiful. It's it's already showing beautiful colors, and I guess I'll show that to you a little bit later on, and um, you know you'll take a look at that. So I wanted to show you his tarantulas because I was really impressed when he handed them over to me. And uh, you can definitely tell that this guy loves his tarantulas. So um, let me go ahead and get those out so that I can share those with you and you'll see what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about is when we did the exchange, every single one of his tarantulas are in these cool little um, breeder boxes. And I'd seen these on uh, Tom Moran's videos before. Um, they're really neat and I never really knew where to find them because the pet shops where I've been to They usually have the critter keepers, but they don't have these particular breeder boxes So um, I, I found a link on Amazon for those and I, I plan on getting some for myself because I think they're really really cool But I think the the thing that impressed me the most about it is that his 
tarantula the it, you know the fact that they're in their their own little enclosures are like this and uh, they're they're all in pristine shape you know everything is nice and clean including the substrate and the tarantulas themselves they're gorgeous so he keeps he really takes care of them so I was really impressed with that I thought that was a really cool that um, it's very apparent that he loves his tarantulas so this little guy right here is one that I own and my myself is uh, Lassiodora Parahibana and his is a little bit smaller than mine I actually have two of these but let's see if we can get this guy out make a little appearance for us here come on guy there we go all right so there's his Lassiodora Parahibana which is also known as the salmon pink tarantula beautiful little guy and uh, let's see if we can get it to eat come on I'll drop one in here oh it wants to go back I've kind of disturbed it so he's probably not wanting to eat whoops yeah I just kind of messed all that up all right, so anyway, I'm going to leave that in there. He'll probably get it. I'll check back later to make sure, but uh, I'm not really worried about it. They're pretty good eaters, and they'll take care of it. Anyway, Lassiodora Parahibana. But you see what I'm talking about, how they all have their little water dish, and they've got their, their coconut bark and nice substrate and everything. Beautiful. Okay, this next one is Acanthoscuria geniculata. And this is also known, commonly known as the Brazilian white knee. And uh, they're very feisty. Um, they will attack just about anything. So let's see if we can get this one to eat, if I can get it to come out. Last time I kind of stuck my little stick in here and he came rushing out, lunged at the stick. So let's see. Whoop, there he goes. Look at that. Made me flinch. All right. So let's see if we can get this guy to eat. Hopefully he will. Love it when the roaches play dead. Oh, it's moving around. There he goes. That was a quick attack. If you're looking for a feisty tarantula that pretty much attacks everything, that's the species to get. Um, they're always hungry. They're always willing to jump on their prey. Um, not very handleable though. <laughs> okay, so this next one is Terino Palma Sazimai. Um, commonly known as the Brazilian blue and I have four of these guys and um, I want to show you what the spiderlings look like as opposed to a subadult which is what he has um, the spiderlings of course will start out pretty much like any other spiderling they're kind of brownish and drab colored mine have gotten to the point where they're starting to get a little bit of size on them and it's kind of interesting that they went from this drab brown color and now they're kind of getting this pinkish color to them. And let me see if I can get this guy out. He's being shy. All right, so there we go. So he's got more of a pinkish coloration to him right now. And uh, they go through this for a couple of molts. And then after that, they start getting a little bit darker. So here's one that I have that is a little bit darker than that one and if you notice the abdomen has a little bit more black hair on it and its legs are starting to get some dark hair on it so it looks a little bit different than the other one if you can see make a comparison there so this is more pinkish and then this one is starting to take on that darker coloration so eventually they will um, completely darken up 
but they have this iridescent blue sheen to their fur or to their hair. <clears throat> So let me go ahead and show you his. Open that up. All right, and this one tends to be a little bit shy, so I'm gonna see if I can coax it out here real quick. All right, so there we go. I'm just gonna pull the, the cork bark out. So I don't know if you can pick this up, but right now, it's looking kind of brown in my opinion, almost blackish. But if I put the light over it, um, you can probably start seeing some of that blue come out. And uh, I imagine when it gets larger, um, you're gonna see more of that blue. It still probably hasn't gotten its full adult coloration yet, but it's still beautiful, feisty little guys. They are, um, you know, a little bit on the, defensive side I would say and as far as eating they should be pretty good eaters see there you go we got a little bit of a defensive pose there so mine have been real good eaters but he's probably not used to being prodded and have his cork bark moved around and everything so yeah so he's being a little bit defensive so I'm just gonna leave him alone and uh, again, he'll probably take care of that roach, and if not, I'll just pull it out later. The next two I'm going to show you are twins. Um, they are Gramastola pulcra, which is commonly known as the Brazilian black. And they're known as the uh, black lab of the tarantula world, um, in, in that they're usually very docile and just a, a good well-natured um, tarantula and uh, great beginner species. Um, I want to show you, uh, I don't know if you consider mine a sling or a juvenile, um, but it's about three inches I would say, so I would say probably juvenile. And um, mine just molted about a day ago and uh, it just started getting its black coloration. They start out drab like most of your slings, um, most of your New World slings, and uh, your terrestrials. So they start out kind of a drab brown. They maintain that brown color as they get older. And uh, every molt they get a little bit darker. And mine has finally gotten its nice black coat, which is what they're known for. And it's just beautiful. To me, it's just a stunning tarantula and that they have that soft velvety looking fur. Um, so anyway, this is mine. And um, I just wanted to show you a smaller one. And these are his. Get these lids off right here. All right, so there's one right there. And there's the other. And these are probably about four inches, maybe four and a half inches, but they've got that nice black velvety fur on them that people are so fond of. And to me, this is just a, an incredibly gorgeous species. Um, just looking at them, just, I just want to cuddle them <laughs> because they're so fat and pudgy and, and have that nice velvety fur on them. I wonder, if I could handle one. Let's see, let's move you over here. And he asked me if, you know, if they happen to molt in his, in my care, he asked me if I would see if I could find out whether it is male or female. So I don't know if I can get this guy out. He doesn't seem to want to climb up the side there. How about you? This one seems a little bit more receptive. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put this one up. I'll just move it aside. See if I can get this one to 
comply. So let's see. Well, they don't even want to move. Yeah, they don't even like touching skin. They might be docile. I'm just going to leave it alone. They might be docile, but you know, they just don't like it. They, they touch skin. They, they move away from it. They just don't want to be on it and climb on it. So I'm not going to force it. You know, I'm not going to stress it out. I just love looking at them. They're, they're just a beautiful species. I wonder if I could get it to eat. Um, I think he said they might be in pre-molt, so they might not eat for me, but let's see. Yeah, it's not even interested. Come on, baby. Yep, no food for you. But look at that, not even hair flicking, nothing. They're just completely chill. Now this last one is one that I don't have in my collection and when I saw it, it was the first time I'd ever seen one that close in person and I, I, it just took my breath away. They are gorgeous. Now this is Brachypelma auratum. Zoom in on that. There we go. And I don't know if the light is doing it much justice, but when I saw it, the reds on it are so brilliant, um, I couldn't believe it. But it's a little bit skittish, so I gotta be careful with it. Um, and uh, it's related to the Brachypelma hamori, which is the Mexican red knee. This one is known as the Mexican uh, flame knee, is what it's known as commonly. So right now he's not moving, he or she is not moving very much. A uh, little bit of a defense there, not bad. I'm trying to get it to come out and walk a little bit so we can get a good look at it. Come on buddy. Yeah, it doesn't want to comply at all. Alright, there we go. Now, you can see the similar coloration on the carapace there somewhat similar to the uh, Brachypelma hamori, um, but the legs, the banding on the legs is just completely different. They've got that really brilliant red knee right there on those femurs, and uh, that is just completely so gorgeous. There's such a bright, brilliant red on them, which is no wonder they call them flame knee. But yeah, it is a bright red. Now, I don't know if it would be willing to eat, Whoops, I just dropped it on top of its head. Yeah, I don't think it's hungry either. Alright, so I promised you to look at my Harpacteria poker piece. And we're in luck it happens to be out and not in its burrow so I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you real quick this is commonly known as the golden blue leg baboon let me shine some light on it there so you can see it a little bit better you can see the golden color and it's starting to get some of the blue on its legs absolutely gorgeous species and there it goes <laughs> it just ran into its burrow all right let me see if i can get it to eat at least and now we wait 
and it's been very shy. Um, it comes out at night. I usually see it roaming around looking for food. Um, anytime I open the enclosure, it usually will tend to bolt into its burrow. And uh, sometimes I can sit, I can actually watch it for a little while and uh, it'll sit out in the open for me. But if I do anything that alarms it, it just takes right off and goes down into its burrow. So I don't know if we're gonna get to see any action or not. Let's see if we can get this roach to move. Well, we didn't get to see much action. Uh, unfortunately, the roach went down into the burrow and it got it in the burrow. So uh, that's the way it goes. Before I leave you today, I'd like to share with you something that happened at school. Um, before I was known as the tarantula guy, um, I was known as the snake guy. Uh, in fact, I still own several snakes and uh, I'm kind of in the process of getting out of snakes. I just don't like doing that anymore. Tarantulas are my thing and I think that's going to be my thing for a while. Um, so anyway, uh, we had, uh, I got a call from our, my administrator asking me to go next door to the dean's office because it's attached to my room and uh, they said that there was a snake in there. So I imagined this huge snake because of the way that they were acting and I went in there and our Dean was uh, telling me that I needed to come get this snake before he ended up killing it. So again, I expected this huge snake and I looked down and in the corner of, near his desk there was this tiny little snake and uh, when I looked at it at first I thought it was a water snake but then I got a closer look with a flashlight and I realized that it was a mud snake. Um, mud snakes, they're they're not that common. They're not rare, but they're hard to see because of their habits. And um, it was it was strange that it would have been in his office. I don't know how it got in there or why it was in there, but they're usually aquatic and they're usually found near water and mud. And uh, so I caught it and I brought it home, figured I'd take some pictures of it. And uh, today my daughter and I, we went to our local ravine and uh, we let it loose and uh, let it go back to nature. So I just wanted to share that with you. Spring has definitely sprung here in Florida. All the flowers are starting to bloom. So that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Um, I want to give a special thank you to my subscribers. Thank you so much. Um, I was up to 600 and I don't know how I got there. Um, and I was just happy to get a few subscribers here and there. I, I was more than happy when I got to 100, but I never thought I'd reach 600. Um, on my way to 1,000, hopefully, and we'll see. But, um, you know, it's just been kind of a, an exponential growth. It's, it's been really cool. So um, thank you so much for subscribing and enjoying my channel. And uh, I look forward to giving you more material and, and showing you more tarantulas and, and talking to you about them. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas.